Well, more or less bring in Republican strategist Rena Shaw. Rena, you just heard Joe talk about the winners and losers. You know who I want to add to that list of winners? I'm going to say the American people. We saw record turnout this year at many of our midterm elections and off-year elections, showing that people are genuinely engaged in the political process. But Rena, I have to ask you, who is your pick for Republicans' biggest political winner this year? Well, I must say, it's been an interesting year on Capitol Hill on both chambers. I I think it's a joy to be here this morning because I always love these lists. They always get the usual suspects, but there are some unknowns sometimes that slip out. And for me, it's in the House side. There's Congresswoman Nancy Mace, who's from South Carolina. She's a relatively junior member. And I bring her up because there weren't many women in politics that stood out for me this year, but she was one of them being the only woman to be part of that group of less than 10 people that ousted Speaker McCarthy. She's been somewhat of a rebel rouser. She wore the scarlet letter A on her shirt, famously on in the days after his ouster. And I think she's somebody to really look at because not only has she shed a fiance, she recently booted numerous male members of her staff. This is a very unusual one in politics. And so she's catching my eye. And I must say, I think she's quite a winner in the House side. Now on the Senate side, though, I want to finger one loser who was not on the list. And that's Senator Tuberville. He mm. also is somewhat different when it comes to Republicans and abortion. Abortion. Just like Nancy Mace has always given a, bit, given a bit of a nuanced answer on abortion, Senator Tuberville staged a political stunt for months on end that held up military promotions, all because he had a problem with the Pentagon's abortion policy. So in my book, he's a big loser. What about some of your winners, Rena? Well, moving on to the winners, I think let's look at the economy writ large. We always talk about who can be a booster. It was women in music this year. If you were not awake, you didn't realize what was going on around you. It was a mega blockbuster concerts from Beyonce to Taylor Swift to now Madonna, who's on tour. I think these women have single-handedly, and we know this about Taylor and Beyonce, they have boosted the economy. There were so many moms who came out of out of the pandemic saying, we got to get back to live music. They took their daughters with them, and guess what? They bought so much merchandise. These women should be credited with giving the American economy a boost. And Rena, we saw, exactly, we saw that those concert goals were buying tickets, they were buying merchandise, they were filling up restaurants, they were filling up hotels, and so many cities benefited. And guess what? You know what? That's the American spirit right there. We get out there and we don't just do it around the holidays. Of course, today's a great day to go and do some shopping online, perhaps even. I, I know many of my peers will be doing that. But I will say for these women in music, we didn't really see it coming. We knew they could be great performance artists, but I think we'll see more of this. People just saying, hey, let's get back together. Let's get united. We've got an election year coming up. So we're going to see people on the trail also evoke some, I, I hope, some degree of positivity. I think Nikki Haley is another winner in my book. Again, I'm talking about the women here who were surprising me. When she started her bid, she wasn't somebody I would have said, hey, let's keep looking at her. But she's really been successful so far, and she's a winner in my book. And we're also seeing her poll numbers climb exponentially in New Hampshire. Maureen, right. I do want to ask you, when we talk about, since you've shifted to the political race and the presidential race of 2024, where does former President Trump rank in all of this? Is he a political winner or loser this year, in your opinion? In my opinion, he wins on being able to stay relevant and, of course, look as if he's winning in the polls. But like I said, I find Nikki Haley's candidacy seems to be successful, even if she doesn't get the GOP nomination. The fact that she's been able to sort of break through the noise of Trump, which is massive, I think that says something right there. But looking at the former president himself, some 90 counts of wrongdoing, indictments, across four jurisdictions, three states in the District of Columbia. This is somebody who's a political loser in my book. There's nothing in American modern history that shows a figure as divisive as him, who has gone to private life and continues to grab the megaphone the way he does. And he doesn't always do it with positivity. So again, a loser in my book here. Well, there is one sure political winner this morning, and that is you, Rena, for joining us this Christmas morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Well, South